Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Well, we knew that GM earnings were going to be down, and they were, but on a global basis, the company actually did worse than expected. First, let's look at the numbers. GM sold 2.41 million vehicles worldwide. That's up 2.3% from a year ago. Revenue came to over $37 billion, but that was up only just over 1%. On an operating basis, GM lost over half a billion dollars, versus a nearly $1 billion profit a year ago. GM's net income was $280 million, down sharply from the $1 billion one it earned last year. Of course, the big drops can be attributed to the $1.3 billion charge the company took for the ignition switch recall and over $400 million for restructuring and currency exchange charges. Drop that money to the bottom line and profits would have been up versus a year ago. But on a worldwide basis, there were other problems as well. Losses in Europe and South America widened, and the profit from its international operations, which includes China, dropped. This shows that GM still has plenty of work to do, even once it gets past its recall problems. Citroën introduced a new SUV concept in Beijing called the CXR. This is the first SUV developed by the French automaker and its Chinese partner, Dongfang. The company says the CXR is a contemporary take on the segment. It's equipped with Citroën's THP160 gasoline engine with stop-start and matched to an automatic. The company didn't say when or if it will go on sale, but as you can see from the pictures, it looks pretty close to being production ready. A new study from DME Automotive shows that car buyers are not that interested in taking test drives before they buy a new car. Nearly half of the people surveyed say they test drove one or no cars before making their purchase. And surprisingly, used car buyers were even less likely to take a test drive than a new car buyer. The survey also had some bad news for dealerships. About 70% of people said they visited only two or less dealers when shopping for a new car, and only about a fifth said they consider salespeople trustworthy. As you probably guessed, car buyers are comparing prices and checking dealer inventory online and then heading to the dealership after their minds are made up. If you want to learn more about the survey, just click on the link in today's show notes. Japanese automakers were at the forefront of putting battery technology in cars, so shouldn't be too surprising they're doing the same for motorcycles. Yamaha just announced it will be bringing a pair of electric bikes to the market by 2016. One is a sport bike called the PES-1 and the other an off-road bike called the PED-1. Both are powered by a brushless DC motor with a lithium-ion battery pack. We've all seen people wear jackets or hats or t-shirts that match the color of their car. Well now Ford and nail care supplier OPI have come out with nail polish to match the paint on your favorite Mustang. The lacquers come in six different shades and have names like Girls Love Ponies and Angel with a Lead Foot. Look for the colors on store shelves by July. You know, what about for the guys? We need something like Black Megadeth or Black Metallic. Hey, have you gone to the parts store recently to buy some kind of fluid for your car only to be overwhelmed by all the options that are available? That report is coming up next. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. These days, automakers offer or recommend all different kinds of fluids for the systems in their vehicles. But are they necessary to use and how do you know which one's right for your vehicle? Here's Sean McElroy with a report on it. Auto Line Garage is brought to you by Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion. 
When was the last time you had to change the fluids for, say, the cooling system, transmission, or even the differential on your vehicle? If it's been a while, it may surprise you that you can't just go out anymore and buy the green or red stuff and pour it in. You know that little tag or note that's on the radiator cap or dipstick that says, refer to owner's manual? Well, it's now more important than ever to follow that advice. Most manufacturers today have specific fluids that they recommend or even fluids with their own proprietary blends. And those fluids come in a wide range of colors. Everything from yellow, orange, red, green, and even blue. Not to mention that they can be considerably more expensive than even a premium version from an aftermarket supplier. And the claim is that these fluids were designed specifically for the vehicles that they're used in, will last longer, and will outperform generic fluids. Now that's all fine and dandy, but it's not like the service intervals have increased for the systems that these fluids are used in, nor do they appear to be lasting longer than before. Don't get me wrong, there are times when a specific or proprietary fluid is necessary, but it just seems like automakers could do a better job of determining those instances and allowing a generic fluid the rest of the time. Although I would prefer to have my own option for what fluid I wanted in the first place. For Autoline Garage, I'm Sean McElroy. Well, thanks for that report, Sean. Hey, before we go, don't forget that Model T expert David Leipelt will be joining us tonight. He's the guy who raced his T against a Tesla Model S and who's been known to commute to work in his Tin Lizzie. So join us tonight for Autoline After Hours starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And as for the rest of today's show, we are over and out.